guys and gals, welcome to another drum lesson brought to you by Drums Anytime. Okay, so this is something I've been working on lately. Um, you know, when I get in these ruts like I've sort of been in, um, I like to find different things to work on that's a challenge to me, rhythmically interesting, works on specific issues, etc. So in this example, um, what I did was I, I came up with this idea of working, um, uh, playing a particular foot pattern, right? And then um, a left hand pattern, which I normally play on the right hand, and then different variations on the on the right hand. So anyway, that sounds confusing. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this pattern with my feet, right? And I'm playing a 2-3 sewn clave on the left foot, a bombo bass drum on the right foot. Don't, don't turn off the video yet as you get bored with this explanation. Um, but anyway, so it's uh, it's just this. Okay. So one, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. By the way, if, if for what it's worth, the reason this is called a two, three sewn clave is because you're playing two beats in the first measure, one, two, three, and then the second measure, one and two and three and four. And it's called a sewn clave because that fourth beat, um, it's on the four and not on the end of the four. It would be uh, a Roomba clave um, if it was. So I don't want to get too, too, too into the details, but uh, so a uh, sewn clave, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, versus one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But this isn't a Latin lesson. This is just some independence thing that I'm working on. So with the feet, it's like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, like you see on the screen, okay? Now, normally, I would play a Cascara pattern on the right uh, hand, normally on the bell like this. Okay. Right? If you've listened to any Latin music before, you've heard that pattern. But in this case, I wanted to um, challenge myself a little more, and I wanted to build my left hand in independence. So I want to play that pattern on my left hand, and I'm playing it on the snare drum for starters. Okay, so that'd be like this. Okay? So. Start adding the left hand, okay? One beat, one note at a time, and you see it written on the screen, so it's just. Okay? Right? Okay? And then what you want to do is start adding the right hand, but you got to get this, these three limbs down totally um, on autopilot. Right? You can't be thinking about what you're doing here if you're adding these different variations on the right hand. So spend time just doing this. Okay. You can move. Right? The surface doesn't matter. I just kind of like it on the snare drum. You know? Well. Right? Right? but just one surface at a time, slowly, all right? When you get comfortable with that, we'll come back and we'll start adding patterns with the right hand. Okay, so now I've assumed, uh, I'm gonna assume that you have the, the basic pattern of this down, as basic as it is, um, and uh, if you wanna call it basic, and that's remember this. Okay. But the ultimate goal is to be able to read rhythmic patterns with the right hand against this. But we have to, you know, crawl before we can walk and walk before we can run. So the first thing I want you to work on is just some patterns with the right hand. And we'll keep them simple at first, and then we'll get them a little more complicated. So the first thing you want to be able to do is just play downbeats, like the downbeat of each measure, of beat one of each measure. So that'd be something like this. Uh, that's no, I, I was playing one and three. It's like this. Okay, I, I moved to different surfaces, it doesn't matter. So you're just playing the the one of the you know the of, of each measure, beat one of each measure. So then you want to go to like one and three, so it'd be like this. Uh. Okay. 
And then you would probably go to like two and then two and four of each measure. But that's what you want to do. You want to break it down into simple chunks until eventually you can play like all the quarter notes. So like right. Okay, so that's how you do that. You break it down, different patterns. You notice we're all in the downbeats right now. Um, so spend time on that, get cool with that, and then when we come back, we'll look at a couple of upbeat patterns we want to play with the right hand. Okay, so now that we have the downbeat patterns with our right hand, we're going to start working on some upbeat patterns. And the first thing I would suggest is um, just play, for example, work on playing the and of the one and the and of the three, right? You could start out with just the and of the one, but this is what it sounds like if you're playing the and of the one and the and of the three. So uh, our non-variable... <laughs> So that was playing the and of the one of the and of the three. Um, and then once you become comfortable with that, just start with some different two note combos. I was going to say something and then I threw me off. But basically the idea is that you just want to try a bunch of different combinations on the right hand before you start reading rhythmic patterns. So get that together, work on different variations on the right hand without changing up what's going on over here. And then when we come back, we'll look at a specific rhythmic pattern that I pulled out of Ted Reed's syncopation to practice this against. Okay, so here we go with the final part of this lesson. We're going to play a, a right-hand pattern based on a rhythmic figure I pulled out of Ted Reed's syncopation, and we're just going to loop that one-bar pattern over this two-bar phrase, and that's going to sound like this. <laughs> So the idea is that I'm, I'm just obviously playing the right hand pattern on the uh, on the um, rack tom and then the the Koskar on the left hand, just taking that pattern one and two and three and four. That's the pattern that that I'm playing with the right hand. So. so a little faster. So that's it. So say so that's it. I understand that for me, this is a very challenging thing to work on. It didn't just, just didn't happen overnight, but really spend the time with it. And it's, to me, it's a cool thing because uh, it's very tangible, right? You can, you can't do it and then you will be able to do it. Spend time on this. Please let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching.